get certain, get certain that you can handle anything like this in the future. Get certain. Not only can you deal with the emotion you have right now, but what you should do is use this as an opportunity to be certain for yourself. Get yourself certain. If it ever happens in the future, I'll handle this emotion quicker and easier. Get certain that you can handle anything like this in the future by rehearsing yourself dealing with it in the future. In other words, think of a time in the future where this depression could have come up and see yourself, feel yourself rehearsing again. Use this as a tool of empowerment. You've got to allow yourself to be able to take advantage of uncertainty. Yes, the world is uncertain right now. Uncertainty is change. Change is life. We both know that. We all know that. But if you and I are going to become masters, we have to understand that we don't have to work on change. Change is automatic. Progress is not. Progress comes when you tell yourself the truth and you're able to feel the uncertainty and take action anyway. Most people in life, we really feel like the level of stress in our life comes to how much of life do you feel like you control or how much does life control you? Do you tend to control more of what's going on or events controlling you? It's very easy to have those events start to take control unless we take control of what's between our ears, our own mind. You see, what you and I focus on massively affects how we feel, whether we're thriving or surviving. If you focus on what you can't control, if you focus on the past, if you focus on what's missing from your life constantly, that pattern of focus will make you frustrated, overwhelmed, depressed. It won't even matter if you're you know, taking antidepressants. If you keep focusing on what you can't control, what's missing from your life, you're going to feel depressed still. You can take as many antidepressants as you want. Focus equals power. Leadership is making decisions. If you're going to lead your own life, you got to make decisions. And what Schwarzkopf said is he realized, Rule number one in life is when put in charge, when put in command, take charge. Make the decision. If it's right or wrong, you're going to find out quicker than if you sit around. And the interesting thing is the more you make decisions, the better you get. What makes somebody a leader? What makes somebody a leader is they're willing to make the decision other people won't make. They want to put themselves on the line, knowing that you're going to be wrong in some of those decisions, but you're going to find out quicker and you can simply adapt and change your approach to still get where you want to go. Be decisive. Don't like your body? Change it. Don't like your relationship? Change it. Start by changing you. If you've changed you, it's still not right, then change it. But the way you make any change happen starts with a decision. All action, all results are mother to fathered, if you would, by a decision. If you put yourself in a place where you got a new vision and you've gotten yourself strong, if you got a role model and you got some strategy and you got yourself into action, step five is give much more than you expect to receive. Simple as that sounds. If you find a way to meet people's needs in business, in an intimate relationship, meeting your kids' needs, anybody's needs, the whole game changes. The chronic excuse maker. How do you stop making excuses? This is actually pretty simple. And I said it the other day, and you have to realize, you have to know, you have to accept that all your excuses are lies. They are lies, all of them. Think about the things that you tell yourself, the lies you use to rationalize taking the easy road. Taking the easy road and leaving discipline behind. Think about them. You don't have time. That's a lie. You don't have support. That's a lie. You don't have the equipment or the gear. Lies. You don't, you don't know the best way. Who cares? That's a lie. Or you're too old or you're too young. Of course you're too old or too young. Lie. And there's you're too busy. Sure you are. That's a lie. And you're too tired or you're too sore or you're just plain not feeling it. Lies, lies, lies. And the list goes on and on and on. And it doesn't stop if you don't make it stop. So recognize recognize the excuses are not valid they aren't they're trumped up 
They're conjured up. They're fabricated. They're lies. And how do you stop the lies? You stop the lies with the truth. The truth. The truth will set you free. The truth will stand and the truth will deliver you from procrastination and laziness and the downward spiral that comes with a lack of discipline. So don't believe the lies, believe the truth. And the truth is you have time, you have the skill, you have the knowledge and the support and the willpower and the discipline to get it done. So cast out the lies, burn them down and listen to the truth and live the truth and go out and get it done. I used to be a big weightlifter and the, uh, but uh, the, uh, I, 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 I used what I used to warm up with now is what I lift now. Because I'm, you know, I'm about 50% weaker than I was at, back in my heyday, uh, 20 some years ago. Um, but we have a gym here. We actually have two gyms. Sure enough. Uh, the, um, but um, the the kids today find uh, reasons or they find things to do to really procrastinate or not, not take action. <laughs> it's, uh, but you got to love. Or you got to have a passion for what you do. If you don't. You know, um, it gets tired. Alistair Cook, the great presenter, BBC presenter, told me about, I don't know, 30, 35 years ago. Being a professional, being a high performance professional is being able to do your very best when you don't feel like it. Mm -hmm. Okay. When you don't. Okay. And, uh, and, and I've had days, not every day, uh, do I, I want to speak, uh, when I'm at the university, the Oxford University, Edinburgh, whatever, but they don't know it. As far as they are concerned, I looked like you know I was I was born for that night, yeah. and I, the uh, and so but I was taught high performance people don't leave anything on the stage. Yeah, yeah in athletic uh, endeavors, I never left anything on on uh, on the field. In uh, public speaking, uh, I don't leave anything on the stage. I'm fully spent yeah, at the end each day. Tell us about failure and why it's important to. I fail. love it. Yeah, because you you mentioned I love, that you it. love it. I love it. I like micro failure. I like micro failure. I hate macro failure, like death of your business is bad. But, but to me, you know what's funny? I'll use a boxing analogy. My favorite boxing, I watch a lot of boxing. I think boxing's a very interesting, and, I know, and I'm super into mixed martial arts, but I grew up on boxing, I understand it better. And I like watching it, because there's so many things that happen in boxing. First of all, what I love about boxing is there's nowhere to hide. You know, like it's super interesting, right? There's nowhere to hide. Number two, there's, some, there's a scenario in boxing that I love the most. There's, for some reason, there's nothing more interesting to me than watching somebody get knocked down in the first round and then go on to win the fight easily. It's an interesting psyche, right? And I like that, and this is what I'm thinking about it, which is like, here's what's bad in boxing and in business. Going into a fight, getting knocked the f out in the first round and losing the match, bad. Getting knocked down, and then having the adversity to readjust to what you got caught on and navigating it to easily win a fight is remarkable. That's how I think about entrepreneurship. People, the reason so many people struggle with entrepreneurship is you have micro failures almost daily and they're very in your face. You can't hide. And uh, I like that. Uh, I like failure I, I, because I think I deserve it. I hate when people don't respect the game. When I fail, it means I f***ed up. And I like that because I think people get audacious. My number one thing that I hate about capitalism is that people use it and they love it and they're big capitalists and they love open market and competition and all that and then they become 73 and they try to use all their money to protect their money. They're not willing to let a young lion eat them the way they ate somebody else. I hate when they try to manipulate it. That's what I love about sports. What I love about sports is when you're 36 and you were once the best player in the league, but now you're getting a little bit older and your body breaks down, you're forced to retire. 
The one thing that entrepreneurship and capitalism has to adjust to is once you get old and you're tired and you wanna be on a yacht instead of working your shit, you should lose some money because you're losing. I love guilt. Guilt is a tool. Guilt is a weapon. Guilt does not have to be a bad thing. It's not like I perpetuate, but I'm like, I love that I feel bad when I don't do a good job. Most people hate that about themselves. I love that feeling. I'm like, I didn't do a good job there. Next time I will. So some people, guilt is discouragement. Other people, it's a signal for learning. To me, guilt is a signal for learning. It is the body and the brain, the spirit, knowing what is right, knowing what is wrong, knowing what's great, knowing what's mediocre. And it's saying, hey, do a little better. Now, if it's translated into a negative impulse, then some people call it guilt. But I'm like, I'm totally cool with guilt. I, you know, I think it's good that we feel bad when we do something that is below our standard or that's not right because that impulse to go, I want to do that better.